Policing for profit, stacking charges, arresting a 55-year-old woman for allegedly flashing her brights to notify other drivers of police presence, bullying residents on social media. These are just a few of the allegations made against Brookside Police in Brookside, Alabama, a suburb of Birmingham. It would appear that an organization has taken over in Brookside, Alabama that is terrorizing local residents and passers-by so bad that even other local law enforcement and the DA feel that something is wrong. Credit to the original outlet that broke the story goes to AL.com. Link is in the description below. January 8th, 2020, I-22 at Cherry Avenue, Brookside, Alabama. 52-year-old Sandra Jo Harris exits I-22 onto Cherry Avenue and drives into a neighborhood nearing dusk. She thinks little about the unmarked black SUV with tinted windows on the side of the road as she enters the neighborhood. As the sun is going down, she turns her lights on. But when she did, the unmarked SUV pulled into the street, crossed the center line, and sped towards her car, blue lights flashing. She wasn't speeding or breaking the law, she argued in the lawsuit. She pulled to the side of the road as the SUV pulled behind her and a wrecker simultaneously parked nearby. Officers exited the unmarked vehicle and approached her dressed in all dark, unmarked uniforms and accused her of flickering her lights to warn others of their presence. Now, although the video here is a dramatization of the events that occurred, the actual events are not exaggerated. In a recent deposition, the chief of police testified that most of his officers roll around in unmarked cars and that all of them wear unmarked uniforms. Unsure of what was going on and in fear for her safety, she dialed 911. But the officer grabbed the phone and threw it to the ground, breaking it. Police put her in the back of a patrol car and then searched her vehicle for drugs. She was taken to Brookside Jail, strip searched, and told that she could be jailed for up to two days. She had an asthma attack and a panic attack, but when she knocked on the door to alert the guard, a jailer said if she continued to knock, she would be charged with attempting to escape. Eventually, she was given an inhaler and treated by paramedics. She was charged with flickering her lights in the form of nuisance of casting lights from motor vehicle on real property at night. She was also charged with resisting arrest, making a false 911 call, obstructing government operations, and disorderly conduct. Her lawyer argues that, quote, Brookside has operated its police and court system with the primary objective of obtaining revenue from its motorists traveling on or near Interstate 22. It has had a continued practice of stopping and ticketing scores of vehicles daily, doing so without probable cause or reasonable suspicion of wrongdoing. But her lawyer isn't the only one making claims like this. There's currently four other open lawsuits against the town for similar behaviors. Even the local sheriff and the DA chimed in, the DA claiming that when you look at their Facebook page, it almost looks as if they're bullies. The sheriff claiming that they regularly get calls from people saying that they were pulled over outside of Brookside jurisdiction and given tickets. The chief of police refuses to tell exactly how many officers are employed by the town, but it's believed to be around 15 officers for a town with a population of under 1,300 people. Last year, with nine officers, the town generated over $600,000 in revenue from fines and forfeitures. Three years ago, this same exact town only generated about $50,000 in fines and forfeitures. The town hasn't grown, so what changed? The small town has arguably become number one in the nation in policing for profit practices. But it's not just fines and forfeitures. Allegedly, the police department has arrested 4.4 people per household in the last year. Now, this is in part because the department victimizes anyone who travels through the town, but it's certainly taken a massive toll on the residents of the town as well. And the town's mayor and police chief say it's not good enough yet. They need to make more. You'd think that with all the bad publicity, they'd be on their best behavior. But when I call town hall, they like to blow air horns in the phone. <clears throat> Thank you for calling the town of Brookside. Please listen carefully because our menu has changed. Press 1 for the water and gas department. Press 2 for the court clerk. Press 3 for the town clerk.
You can head over to their Facebook page and let them know what you think. Oh, nope, they deleted it. Court only happens once a month when people arrive and line up out the door to stand before Judge Jim Wooten complaining of penny ante crimes and harassment by officers. But much like other municipalities, they don't really have a judge, they have a bar member. A regular, everyday bar member who's paid by the city to sit in and act as a judge for one day a month. Links to the law offices of James M. Wooten are listed below. He's one of the few lawyers on AVO Lawyer Directory with a one-star rating. Allegedly, there's so much traffic on court day that officers have to arrive and direct traffic, having people park in a grassy field outside of the municipal parking lot. Research done by AL.com found that in a two-year period between 2018 and 2020, Brookside revenues from fines and forfeitures soared more than 640% and now make up more than half of the city's total income. AL's research also found that the town reported just 55 serious crimes to the state in the entire eight-year period between 2011 and 2018. It certainly wasn't as if this town was riddled with crime. So why did the town start hiring so many police officers? While we can't say for sure, it certainly looks as if it's because it's profitable business. But the accusations coming from residents in Brookside aren't just alleging legalized plunder, they're even alleging illegal plunder by the Brookside Police Department. Brookside police officers are accused of fabricating charges, using racist language, and quote, making up laws to stack counts on passersby. The town is now facing five lawsuits that will hopefully make this policing for profit a little less profitable. If we're lucky, these lawsuits will end in a net loss for the town. But even if lawsuits completely bankrupt the town, there's no doubt that the town employees and police will never pay out of pocket for this, and it'll likely leave the town residents in debt. But the town's police chief, Mike Jones, who spearheaded the change and grew the police department tenfold, calls the town's policing, quote, a positive story. And Mayor Mike Bryan seems to agree with him. With no shame whatsoever, Chief Mike Jones said, quote, I see a 600% increase. That's a failure. If you had more officers and more productivity, you'd have more. I think it could be more. What does he mean by 600% increase? Is he saying that there's a 600% increase in crime reduction in the area? No, the only thing that they have to show for their policing is a 600% increase in revenue. Guys, my presentation of this story has barely even begun to scratch the surface. AL.com has done one of the most extensive and most detailed investigations into this department that I've ever seen, and with good reason. Please follow the link to the rest of the story, read about the other lawsuits, and read about how the local sheriff believes that the feds are going to end up having to move in to end what's going on in Brookside, Alabama. I'll also put contact information for the town and the police department in the description below. But that contact information won't likely help you because as you can see from the Google reviews over the past four years, the entire town staff is nothing but rude, unprofessional and dismissive. 